I've had a strong craving for a while. Uh, but to the point that it, uh, it's all I can think about. This isn't really anything new. I kind of go through cravings like this from time to time. In fact, uh, a few years back, I had one thing on my mind. Honey persimmons. <laughs> Fruit of the gods, as they are sometimes referred to. And for good reason. Everything about them is so exquisite. From the smooth gold-orange skin to the creamy texture on the inside. The flavor is incomprehensible. And if I, if I had to take a crack at it, I would say it's like a cantaloupe. Or a peach. We're married in a pool of honey. <laughs> that still doesn't do the honey persimmon justice, however. Sadly, they're seasonal. October through February is when you can see these bad boys in store. It was June when I started my honey persimmon craze, of course. So I was a little desperate to get my hands on some. I googled if any nearby stores were selling honey persimmons, and when the website didn't say if they had them or not... I would call the stores and ask, but I would always get a polite, no, I'm sorry. Thought I was going to end up in a straitjacket if I didn't have honey persimmon sometime soon. I had just finished doing my futile laps around the produce section of the grocery store when I saw a pink piece of paper that read, Honey persimmons, year round. I felt like a shaken soda can, bubbly and ready to explode. I mean, I'm not a religious man, but if I were... If I were, I'd like to know what I did to get on God's good side. <laughs> the drive was about three hours away, but I figured it'd be worth it if I brought back a couple honey persimmons. My mouth was watering just thinking about biting into one of those juicy, sweet, and heavenly orbs. I immediately checked the time to see if I could have gone that day. But sadly, I was, I was uh, going to have to wait until the next day. I could hardly sleep. I wanted to leap out of bed and just start start the drive, you know, but I I made myself wait. Once dawn crept over the horizon, I called in sick at work. And I prepared for the drive. Three hours on the road felt like nine. And and that wasn't just because I was excited for some badass fruit. <laughs> Where I live, once you exit the city limits, the world turns into flat farmland with absolutely nothing to look at. I listened to a few podcasts to fight boredom, but the words would immediately fade into nonsense as my mind drifted towards honey persimmons. During one of these fruit-based daydreams, my mind snapped back inside the car at the sound of static from my speakers. I checked my phone to see if I was losing signal. I had full bars. Creeping through the static sounded like a baby crying, but otherwise, the best I could describe the sound is if a... A whale tried to do an impression of a human baby crying. You know, I, I I tried changing the podcast, switching to different apps, resetting my phone. Nothing worked. I eventually just turned off my phone and finished the drive in silence. I could see rain off in the distance when I neared the address advertised on the Honey Persimmons Year Round flyer. The closer I got, the harder it came down. It escalated from a few drops to a light pitter-patter and finally to the sky actively trying to drown me. The GPS finally gave me the final instruction. Turn right, then arrive at your destination. I turned right, pulled into a long, gravel driveway with an older-looking house at the end. The gravel wetly crunched beneath my tires as I pulled up next to the house patio with a sign that said, Honey Persimmons, year-round. A man was sitting in a wicker chair on the patio, looking out towards the rain. I stepped out of my car with my plastic bin that I had brought for the Honey Persimmons, I was immediately soaked. I did a light jog towards the patio and stopped at the stairs. It's up with all the rain, I said, trying to make small talk before I got down to business. It's come, the man said with a voice as gravelly as the driveway. Uh, yeah, I can see that, I said, looking around. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm here about the honey persimmons. Oh, well, come on in. Let's get you uh, out of all this wet crap. The man said with his eyes now fixed on me. I trotted up the stairs and onto the patio. Is that the bin for the persimmon? The man asked. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed, I clumsily replied. The man scratched his chin and nodded. All right, well, hand me that bin. I'll go up and fill her up. As he took my bin, I noticed his shirt was dotted with silver dollar wet spots. It didn't look like they were caused by the rain. He went inside the house, and soon after, I thought I could hear the whale baby cry again. It was eerily calm. 
Tried to focus on the haunting cry and see where it was coming from. It sounded like it was coming from above. I looked up, but I, I can only see white gray rain clouds. Looking out on the stretch of land in front of the house, puddles of rain grew into miniature white lakes. In one of the puddles, I saw what I thought was some sort of pole, but when it moved, I realized it was a person. They looked like they were holding something towards the sky. Hey! My gravity voice punched through the relaxing sounds of the rain. I jumped and turned around to the source of the exclamation. The man stood in the doorway, propping the screen door open. Don't drink the rainwater, he said sternly. I wasn't, I began to say before he shushed me. Nope, I don't care if you were or you weren't, just don't. Reckon? He finished with a razor's eyebrow. I nodded and he went back inside. I saw the wet spots on his shirt were now red. I was willing to forgive a lot of strangeness for honey persimmons, but I was beginning to think that I should head back and cut my losses. Just as I turned around, something hard was shoved between my lips. A thick, salty liquid pooled into my mouth and trickled down my throat. I shoved the person away from me and coughed violently. A young man holding a mason jar painfully laughed. Now you'll see him too. The hell is wrong with you? I shrieked. You don't hear it? You don't hear the song? He sings when he gives us the fertile rain. The young man's eyes widened. Red eyes hid behind long hair. Wet hair. His lips twitched up and down as if he didn't know if he wanted to smile or frown. The world darkened as if the rain clouds had suddenly thickened. The eerie crying sound was now deafening. I could feel the force of each cry in my chest. I looked up towards the sky and I saw a dark behemoth contrasted against the same white-gray clouds. It was vaguely whale-like in appearance with a wide tail, two flippers on either side of its body, but that's where the similarities ended. In place of where the whale's face would be were three infant faces imperfectly fused together as if they had... They had budded at separate times, scattered across the body were more infant faces varying in size, all of which were imperfectly fused together as well. Their faces did not cry in unison, some of their eyes were open, revealing black, glossy orbs, some of their eyes were shut with thick tears that trickled down the other faces. This nightmarish wail moved as slowly and as subtly as the clouds that it weaved itself in and out of. Don't let them fool you. The young man warned. Those aren't tears, he laughed. Then made overly acted, gagging sounds and motions. The man came back outside with my bin, took one long look at me and said, Damn it! The young man stopped laughing, lowered his head and hid his hands behind his back. I see Junior made you drink some of the rain, even though I told him to stay in his room, the man said. His last words strongly addressed at the young man. My stomach was sinking. I felt as if I was drowning in shock. Listen, the kid hadn't been right since his mom died in childbirth. The rain's just too fertile, the man said calmly. It's so fertile that it even affects Dad, Junior said, pulling a teratoma-like mass out of his pocket. I felt vomit creeping up my throat. Damn it, Junior, go up to your room! The man bellowed as he covered the wet red spots on his shirt with his hand. Junior walked into the house and slammed the screen door behind him. The man shrugged, then handed me my bin. Let's say we just treat this as a normal business transaction. The man began as the colossal whale cried. Forget you saw that thing. Drank the rain that isn't really rain and you can just go home or you'll eat your persimmons and try your best to regain normalcy. The man gave a weak, sympathetic smile. I could just call the authorities, I said, feeling like I had to combat this however, however little I could. The man's weak smile grew strong. Good luck with that, he said, as the whale cried again. There was a long, pregnant pause. I reached in my pocket. I pulled out $30. Paid for the honey persimmons. And I left. As I drove away, I looked in the rearview mirror and stared as the whale-like abomination was swallowed by white-gray clouds, leaving just a dull silhouette of its massive tail. 
The farther away I got from the rain, the more dreamlike and unreal the experience was, as, as if it had never happened. Keeping my eyes on the road, I reached into the bin, pulled out a honey persimmon, and took a bite. A warm, copper taste filled my mouth instead of the sweet, juicy taste I expected. Strands of hair were connected to the bite I took, and to what I thought was the honey persimmon. I inspected the false fruit. I saw it was a mass of flesh filled with hair and teeth. I pulled the hair out of my mouth. I stared at the road in shock while holding the bleeding teratoma. I don't know why. But I didn't feel like throwing up out of disgust. No, I felt compelled to take another bite. Over the course of the three-hour drive back home, I had eaten every last one in the bin. And they're all I can think about now. I, I'm obsessed. I'm going to have to go and get another bin full again sometime. Maybe I'll bring two bins. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So, all the best to all of you who are still working, and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year, with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either cancelled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes and Google and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G. Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Center, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hasanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>